Hi guys, welcome back. So, if you're any kind of military history buff, you know that yesterday was a really, really important day because it was the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Waterloo, which is obviously a huge deal. There are a lot of reenactments going on all throughout the weekend at the battlefield itself. It's, it's been a huge event. They've been kind of uh, promoting it here all year, especially probably where you live too. I don't know, depending. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go. It would have been a lot of fun, I think. It's a huge, huge event this year. But I thought, well, at least I'm going to try this weekend to do a figure for you that is uh, appropriate for the occasion. So I have picked out this fellow right here. You probably will recognize him as a member of the French Imperial Guard. He is specifically a grenadier. Um, this particular model is by Founder. He's a little on the small side, closer probably to 25 millimeter actually than 28, but you know, he kind of falls under that same broad classification of 28 millimeter type figure, I guess. Um, <clears throat> So I'm going to be painting this for you, and yes, it is going to be a pretty complicated figure probably because this is kind of the height of fancy uniforms. Um, and there's a lot of white on here, a lot of blue, a lot of red, as you might think. Plus he's carrying a lot of equipment, which is always pretty time consuming on these figures. I know it hasn't been all that long since I last did a Napoleonic, but I thought given the commemoration, it was just an opportunity that was a little bit too good to pass up. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Now, obviously, we don't usually think of the Napoleonic French uniform as being white. I mean, it's not known as that, but when you're painting it, it actually ends up being the case very often, as with this figure, that you're going to be mostly painting white because you've got the pants, you've got the waistcoat, you've got a whole bunch of straps and equipment, and all of those are going to be white. And that's why I'm starting out with white here, because it really is basically the dominant color on this figure. Now, I have base coated my figure with black, and you may be thinking, ew, why in the world would you do that when you're going to be painting so much white? You're going to make your life difficult. It does make your life difficult to a certain extent, but the end results are so good, in my opinion, that it's kind of worth the extra difficulty. And I feel like I've got to a point now where um, it's not that onerous, honestly. What I'm doing here is applying a base coat of Vallejo Sky Gray. I'm not concerned right away with getting really perfect coverage. As you can see, in fact, the coverage is fairly bad. You can really see a lot of blotchy um, sort of black coming through. But what I'm mostly concerned about here is making sure I get an even coverage. It doesn't have to be... It doesn't have to be solid, it just has to be even. So I'm going to go over most of the white areas in this uniform. There's some exceptions. There's some little detail areas that I'm going to come back and take care of later because it's just more convenient. But I'm going to be doing the majority right now. So once I've got a base layer of sky gray down, I'm then going to go back over it, apply another coat, and that is going to help smooth things out, get a more even layer. And at this point, we're already going to start sort of defining areas that are going to be lighter on the figure already by building up a heavier, thicker coat of the sky gray on areas of the uniform that we expect to be lighter and brighter. Once I've got a fairly even coat of the sky gray where I want it, I'm now going to make a mix. It's about 50-50 white and sky gray, and I'm going to start layering that over top. Now, it is definitely brighter than our base layer, but not so much that you're going to have a real headache trying to blend it in. And again, because this is a light white gray paint, there's a lot of transparency there, which also makes things easier. So you can see now I'm really starting to uh, focus this on areas where uh, I want the you know the clothing to really appear highlighted where I want it to appear light and you can see I'm sort of blending it out down into some of the harder folds in the pants and under you know around the spats and you know definitely when you're painting all those straps and stuff on the front of his jacket and around his waistcoat all those sort of dividing lines and seams there you're going to be want to be really careful to make sure you keep that initial sky gray base coat in the areas where you need to really show that there's separate pieces going on. And just like with my last layer here, I'm going to be applying several coats of this, building it up 
Uh, it depends how many times you do it. It's going to depend. I usually find with this color, I want to build it up maybe uh, two or three times. And then after that, it's pretty much got to saturate as, as it's going to get. And then you want to kind of move on to the next layer. Now we're just continuing this process, but now we've got pure white paint, which of course, as you know, is the most transparent. Uh, like when I was applying my sky gray initially, I'm mostly concerned that the first layer of white is as even as possible. You can see it's kind of, uh, you can see gray bits through it. It's not very consistent, I guess, but I want that first layer mostly just to be even, and I'm making sure that it goes on all the sort of higher areas and is nice and smooth. If you don't keep it smooth if you end up areas where the white is more concentrated than areas where it's less concentrated it's going to be a pain in the butt later to correct the less concentrated areas because you'll you know you'll paint over everything and then those d dark areas will get brighter but so will the brighter areas and then you'll never end up with sort of an even coat so it's important that you try to keep your layers even and consistent every time you do them. So I get one sort of initial white layer going, as you can see, and then once that's on, like with the previous gray shades, I'm gonna just start going back over it and you know, gradually building the white up on the areas where we need to have some stronger highlights and blending the white out into the more shaded recessed areas, like between his legs and you know, along creases or more gentle folds, that kind of thing like that. Again, white's transparent, more so than even the grays we just used, so you'll have to apply a couple layers at least of the white before you get it probably up to its sort of maximum brightness that you can achieve. Actually, with white, you can go really, really far. And as I've said in some previous videos, if you want to hurry the process along, you can apply a couple uh, thin layers of white to build it up a bit, and then to get the really intense white areas on some sort of high highlight areas, you can use a thicker paint because that'll make it just go a lot faster for you and you won't be as concerned with blending at that point because you'll just be blending that really pure white into areas that are almost as white. So yeah, just again, just go back over the white, build it up and you can, and you can do this to your taste. You know, if you want, you can leave it a little bit more on the gray side or you can just really keep going until you've got a really strong white color. I prefer to go for the really strong white color here because, you know, I don't want this uniform to be mistaken for sort of a light gray tone. Next, I'm going to be moving on to painting the blue areas on his uniform jacket. And also that, I should say, that includes his bedroll. It's usually um, a dark blue. And the, the this French blue color is a very, very dark black blue. Um, I think there are probably some very good Vallejo colors for painting this. I don't happen to have any kind of specific French blue shades from Vallejo, so I have to make do with what I have. So I'm applying a base coat here that is a mixture of dark Prussian blue and black, and you need a lot of black in there, especially initially, just because it is going to be a very dark blue color, and even if it wasn't, you're going to get just the best contrast on these kind of colors if you work from a really, really dark base. There's not much tricky about this color, but you do need to make sure that you're careful because since we elected to paint the white first, it means a little bit more neat painting later on with the other colors to keep it from getting onto the white areas and spoiling them. Now I'm going to work on lightening my blue. My first uh, lightening shade here is, is uh, still dark Prussian blue, but with a little bit less black in it. You can almost really just go up to dark Prussian blue. That'll work fine. Um, and I'm just going back over the jacket. On this particular model, the blue areas actually aren't very exposed. There's not very many of them. So this actually shouldn't take you very long. It certainly didn't take me very long because it's just fairly straightforward in this case. In terms of lightening the figure further, um, I, what I did was I took some Oxford blue from Vallejo and I started using that to lighten the dark Prussian blue. And then I sort of just apply highlights carefully and sparingly. I'm using Oxford blue because um, French, the sort of French blue color of the uniforms, it, ha it sort of has a grayish blue cast to it. It's not quite as brilliant as the Prussian blue, so that's why I feel like I need to use a gray blue as sort of a lightening color. So I just mix it into the dark Prussian blue, and I sort of, I'm going to very subtly, in this case, lighten it up 
and I and I can just sort of continue, or you can continue just adding that in uh, to to sort of build up uh, progressive shades. Uh, my final highlight, in fact, was just pure Oxford blue. You're going to want to apply that pretty thinly though, and blend it out a lot, and you know just kind of use it on the very highest spots, like the tops of creases and folds on the bedroll and on the sleeves particularly, and a little bit on the collar. And you can make as many sort of um, sort of different grades as you want but again it, you can it, you don't need to get too carried away here because it's it's a fairly small area and we do want to keep it fairly subtle in this case I'm not going to be working on some of the red detail areas of the uniform um, this particular Imperial Guard Guard Grenadier he's got some red cuffs He's got red turnbacks at the back. Um, there's a little bit of thin red trim sort of at the front. Just a few areas. His epaulets are going to be red. <clears throat> and also, of course, the emblem on top of his hat. Don't forget that. I'm not really going to show painting the top of the hat very much just because it's really awkward to film that. But, you know, you, you want to make sure you do it. <clears throat> so you just want to start out by base coating all of those areas here. Uh, using um, Vallejo black red and it's again it's straightforward you just have to be careful not to get any sort of mess on your um, existing paintwork which is always a bigger concern when you've got these sort of w big areas of white that you're dealing with because a little slip can make a lot worse a mess to clean up than it would if it was onto a darker color. I'm then going to go ahead and highlight the red first using um, Citadel Mephiston Red. It's a base color, so it's pretty thick, so I tend to thin it down slightly with water. Again, nothing really complicated here. I'm just sort of applying it over the black red in most places, just leaving the black red alone if it's a really, really deep shadow area, or, you know, like on those epaulets. If I want to emphasize sort of the different pieces of braid, you can leave it dark in between kind of as a lining color. You may want to apply a couple uh, levels of this color just because it, it tends not to get to a sort of full, again, it's full saturation with just one coat. I'm then going to really finish my red off by getting a really bright sort of really poppy highlight going using um, Citadel Evil Skun Scarlet. You don't really need to thin this. You can put it on right out of the bottle if you want. And you can see again, I'm just kind of working back over the red areas and really just emphasizing them, making them even brighter, making them just draw more attention. And again, just making sure that I don't overdo it so that you don't have any sort of contrast areas with that really sort of black base color. We still need that in there to create contrast and show sort of divisions between the pieces. Now I'm going to be working on the brown areas of the model. So in this case, that's going to be the uh, rifle stock, the musket stock, and his backpack, which is sort of made out of uh, rough uh, cow hide that hasn't had the fur removed from it. Uh, in the case of the gun, I'm going to start out by base coating it with German camouflage black brown, one of my favorite colors if you haven't noticed. And then for the backpack, I'm going to apply a base coat of Vallejo chocolate brown. You do need to be a little careful on the backpack because you've got those white stripes that you kind of have, or straps I should say, you have to paint around and you don't want to mess that up too much if you can avoid it. Once I finish base coating the backpack, I'm going to also go back in with the chocolate brown and use it to put a kind of a light first highlight onto the uh, musket stock already. I'm going to start highlighting the uh, brown areas now. In the case of the musket stock, I want to go for a sort of a more yellowy gray wood color. So I've taken my chocolate brown here and I've thinned it with some khaki gray. Uh, not too much yet, but my first layer, you know, I want it to be fairly subtle. So I'm going to apply that, kind of blend it out, and then I'm just going to go up, kind of lighten it here. Now I'm using just pure khaki gray, you can see, and just sort of uh, defining the uh, wood pieces a little better, the areas where light is hitting, just, you know, sort of progressively brightening that up until I'm happy with it. If you uh, want a really light shade, you can then even go, and I did, to add in a bit of Iraqi sand to that khaki gray, and then use that as almost sort of an edge highlight between the different uh, pieces on 
the rifle stock. Uh, as for that cowhide backpack, I want that to be a little bit of a more orangey red, so I'm using Vallejo Orange Brown. You have to be careful with that color though, because it's quite pigmented, so you want to cut it with something else. My first highlight here, I cut it with chocolate brown, and I'm applying it in a very sort of overbrushing technique, so really lightly brushing the serve with surface here with not too much paint because otherwise you'll lose some of that detail and you can see I'm also really emphasizing sort of the sharp seams and all of that and then I made a couple passes here uh, just progressively mixing in more orange brown into my chocolate brown to get it brighter and brighter until I finally had just almost pure orange brown which I really then lightly applied just sort of at that sort of top part of the back pack where you know it's really kind of going to be at its brightest but again as I said be careful with that orange brown because it is an intense color and it's easy really to apply uh, entirely too much of it to your model the final thing that I went ahead and did with the backpack after the paint had all dried was I took a wash of Reichlin Flesh Shade and applied that fairly lightly on the backpack and that helped unify the whole thing and it also helped sort of uh, define better again so that sort of sculpted hair on the backpack because some of that kind of gets lost a little bit with all the overbrushing especially on those sort of lightest most highlighted areas. Now I'm going to be base coating the black kind of gray areas in the model which are going to include his shoes, his uh, cartridge case, <clears throat> his bayonet and sword scabbard, and of course his hat. And that, that's the main reason that I did not paint this black sooner. I left it to the end because the hat is an area of the model that's very exposed. It gets touched a lot while I'm painting. And if you paint it earlier on in the process, there's a good chance that you'll wear the paint off or damage it while you're painting other areas. So that's why I kind of waited really to the end. So yeah, at this point, just applying a black base coat to all those areas, making sure I've got good coverage and that I've got covered up any areas that just where it really just needs the black paint. Next, I'm going to be highlighting the black. Uh, as usual here, I'm starting out with German Gray, which is going to be sort of my general highlight. I'm going to apply it pretty generously to all of the areas, really just avoiding down in any sort of seams or cracks. Um, and in terms of the hat, we need to be a little bit careful. It's black, it's fuzzy, um, so we don't want to overdo highlighting it too much. I'm using, again, an overbrushing technique, so I'm trying to go real light here. Again, you want to focus the color more towards the top of the hat where more light is hitting. But again, if you get too much paint on, get sound effects, don't worry about that too much. We're going to go back and correct that a bit. Once you've got your uh, German gray uh, first layer on, I'm going to, you can then, I'm going to, <laughs> you can then go ahead and start uh, lightening it. I, I'm using sky gray for that. So I've just lightened the German gray with sky gray and I'm starting to then sort of gradually highlight sort of along the areas where light would be hitting on all of those sort of black leather areas, the toes of the shoes, along the edges of the bayonet and scabbard, uh, along the edge of the cartridge case, on his hat. Again, just we're lightly over brushing again, but less than we did with the German gray. You want to take it a little bit more easy. And you can apply as many layers here as you want, though I recommend, of course, not going too high because you don't want it too bright and shining. And if you want, you can go further with the shoes, the, you know, the cartridge case and all the leather areas on the figure, but make sure you don't uh, get so crazy when it comes to highlighting the hat. We want to keep that a little bit toned down. You can see I'm even using almost pure sky gray to highlight some of the leather areas just because I really want there to be some sort of shininess going on there, but don't put that really high color on the hat. As a matter of fact, this, it's really important once you're done with everything else, go ahead and put a non-oil wash over the hat. That'll help unify that gray again, uh, calm it back down so it's not so light and faded looking, and it'll bring out all the sort of the rough sculpting and all that hair. At this point, I'm going to go back and take care of any white areas on the figure that I hadn't painted yet, things that I left because they weren't convenient to paint in the first place, but now I'm kind of at a stage where I do want to do them. So that's not really much. It really, basically, it's going to include his uh, rifle strap, some detailed, like, embroidery on his coat, and, of course, the emblem on top of his hat. And those areas, at this point, are just getting base coated with the sky gray, and I'm doing it the same as I did before, kind of layering it on a bit. 
And then I'm just going to highlight those uh, areas again with white to brighten them up like I did on the other areas. This is also a good opportunity if you made a mess on some of the white areas while you were painting. And I'm sure it's going to happen. At least it happened for me. It's pretty much inevitable. You're going to, you know, damage some areas because with white, it's such a delicate color. It's really easy to do. So not only am I highlighting the areas like the gun strap and those tassels and embroidery bits that I just added, I'm also going back over and looking at the other white areas and cleaning up any places where I got sort of another color in or the edge is not as crisp as I want. So, you know, just as just generally finishing off all possible white areas in the figure and just cleaning up any existing ones where you're not happy with how they look. Now because we're uh, dealing with uh, Imperial Guard Grenadier here, uh, our fellow has fairly uh, blingy equipment. He's got more gold, more brass on him than some other units might. So I'm going to be painting those areas now. Uh, that's going to include some hardware on his sword, his scabbard, some pits, bits of his gun, all of his buttons, of course, you're going to want to do in brass bronze. He's got also a plate on the front of his hat. You want that in gold uh, bronze, all those kind of areas. I'm base coating them now using a mixture of German camouflage black brown and just a bit of Vallejo air gold. Not too much. We want to keep it dark so it'll be high contrast later. Once you've done that, and be especially careful, I might add, with the buttons. It's easy to keep get them so they're not as round or even as you want. Uh, so be careful there. Anyway, once you've got all that in, go ahead and you can and grab just some pure Vallejo Air Gold and start highlighting. Now, I would say you don't necessarily want to highlight yet uh, on the buttons and the really small areas because you're just wasting your time. You won't see the difference enough, but you will want to apply it to things like the hat plate and uh, scabbard hardware and that kind of thing to get a really high bright highlight for everywhere but particularly in those buttons and bits i recommend you mix some vallejo air silver with your vallejo air gold and then you can apply it very thinly as sort of the final highlight on those buttons and because they're so tiny you just need those that one color you don't need that intermediate highlight but you'll want to of course apply it to everything too to the hat and to the bits of the gun and just everywhere but you will definitely save yourself some time if you don't use the intermediate highlight on areas that are just really teeny tiny here. Finally, I'm going to be doing the gun metal steel areas on this model. There really aren't that many because this guy is so fancy. So most of this kind of work is going to be on the gun, the, the sort of the lock mechanism, the bayonet, the barrel. It's not even, you don't even really see very much of that here because of the way he's holding his gun. But I'm going to base coat those areas anyway with a mixture of German gray and Vallejo Air uh, gun metal, mostly German gray, of course. And then I'm just going to go back in with pure gun metal and lightly highlight over all these areas, sort of just brushing on lightly, smoothing it out. Again, this figure is very easy in that regard because of how he's holding the gun. Not very much is exposed, so you don't really need to spend much time here highlighting or blending. You know, it should be a pretty straightforward process. Okay, so here is our French Napoleonic Imperial Guard Grenadier figure, all finished. He's, of course, all ready now for Waterloo or whatever uh, battle you'd want to throw him into. And I found that this figure went surprisingly fast and was surprisingly easy to paint because those are two things you usually don't associate, sort of Napoleonic French units and easy painting. I think a lot of that came down to the fact that this figure really is, like I said at the beginning, all about painting white well. It really is the dominant thing in the uniform, and if you do that well and, you know, you get it down, then really I found that the rest of the colors, the rest of the elements of the uniform were fairly minor. They were quite a bit of an afterthought, and you really didn't have to put that much time and attention into doing the other elements. And that sort of brings up my sort of final point that how easy a figure is going to be be to paint also has an awful lot to do with its pose um this guy is in a very static straight pose and sort of what equipment you do see and what equipment you don't see also makes a big difference in you know how much trouble you're going to have painting him and it's something to consider when you're building an army if you want to save time speed the process up pick figures 
you can look kind of look at the figure and you can see, you know, is he standing, is he posed in a way that's going to make him harder to paint, or is he posed in such a way that certain things are hidden, certain elements you don't have to worry about because of his posture, or there's just a lot of areas are covered up, you know, things like that. You can think about that. I mean, the, of course, the trade-off is that maybe you won't have such an interesting army if you if you pick figures purely for their you know ease of painting in terms of their pose. You, that's going to mean you know maybe less interesting army. On the other hand, you can then kind of compromise by making most of your figures a more sort of simple to paint pose, and then having a few more complicated poses in there to keep it interesting. There's various things you can do, but it's definitely something that you should think about, especially when painting armies that choosing the right poses and you know can really save you a bunch of time when you're painting and you can work towards your strengths and weaknesses if you're good at painting white you can choose poses where you see a lot of white like this guy if you're bad at it, choose a pose where a lot more of the white is going to be hidden so you know think about that choose figures for your strengths and weaknesses their poses just keep that in mind um again okay so i think that's it so again if you like this video please like it share it with your friends leave me comments on what you thought uh subscribe of course if you haven't done so already you can keep up with everything i'm doing and i think that's all for now so i will be seeing you next week Hi guys, welcome back. So if you're any kind of military history buff, you know that yesterday was a really, really important day because it was the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Waterloo, which is obviously a huge deal. There are a lot of reenactments going on all throughout the weekend at the battlefield itself. It's It's been a huge event. They've been kind of uh, promoting it here all year, especially probably where you live too, I don't know, depending. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go. It would have been a lot of fun, I think. It's a huge, a huge event this year. But I thought, well, at least I'm gonna try this weekend to do a figure for you that is uh, appropriate for the occasion. So I have picked out this fellow right here. You probably will recognize him as a member of the French Imperial Guard. He is specifically a grenadier. Um, this particular model is by Founder. He's a little on the small side, closer probably to 25 millimeter actually than 28, but you know, he kind of falls under that same broad classification of 28 millimeter type figure, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna be painting this for you. And yes, it is going to be a pretty complicated figure probably because this is kind of the height of fancy uniforms. Um, and there's a lot of white on here, a lot of blue, a lot of red, as you might think. Plus he's carrying a lot of equipment, which is always pretty. Applying several coats of this, building it up. Uh, it depends how many times you do it. It's going to depend. I usually find with this color, I wanted to build it up maybe uh two or three times and then after that it's pretty much got as saturated as, as it's going to get and then you want to kind of move on to the next layer now we're just continuing this process but now we've got pure white paint which of course is you know is the most transparent uh, like when i was applying my sky gray initially i'm mostly concerned that the first layer of white is as even as possible you can see it's kind of uh, you can see gray bits through it. It's not very consistent, I guess, but I want that first layer mostly just to be even, and I'm making sure that it goes on all the sort of higher areas and is nice and smooth. If you don't keep it smooth, if you end up areas where the white is more concentrated than areas where it's less concentrated, it's going to be a pain in the butt later to correct the less concentrated areas because you'll, you know, you'll paint over everything and then those d dark areas will get brighter, but so will the brighter areas, and then you'll never end up with sort of an even coat. So it's important that you try to keep your layers even and consistent every time you do them. So I get one sort of initial white layer going, as you can see, and then once that's on, like with the previous gray shades, I'm gonna just start going back over it and you know gradually building the white up on the areas where we need to have some stronger highlights and blending the white out 
into the more shaded recessed areas, like between his legs and, you know, along creases. Or time consuming on these figures. I know it hasn't been all that long since I last did a Napoleonic, but I thought given the commemoration, it was just an opportunity that was a little bit too good to pass up. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Now, obviously, we don't usually think of the Napoleonic French uniform as being white. I mean, it's not known as that, but when you're painting it, it actually ends up being the case very often, as with this figure, that you're going to be mostly painting white because you've got the pants, you've got the waistcoat, you've got a whole bunch of straps and equipment, and all of those are going to be white. And that's why I'm starting out with white here, because it really is basically the dominant color on this figure. Now, I have base coated my figure with black, and you may be thinking, ew, why in the world would you do that when you're going to be painting so much white? You're gonna make your life difficult. It does make your life difficult to a certain extent, but the end results are so good, in my opinion, that it's kind of worth the extra difficulty. And I feel like I've got to a point now where um, it's not that onerous, honestly. What I'm doing here is applying a base coat of Vallejo Sky Gray, I'm not concerned right away with getting really perfect coverage. As you can see, in fact, the coverage is fairly bad. You can really see a lot of blotchy um, sort of black coming through. But what I'm mostly concerned about here is making sure I get an even coverage. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be solid, it just has to be even. So I'm going to go over most of the white areas in this uniform. There's some exceptions. There's some little detail areas that I'm going to come back and take care of later because they're more gentle folds, that kind of thing like that. Again, white's transparent, more so than even the grays we just used, so you'll have to apply a couple layers at least of the white before you get it probably up to its sort of maximum brightness that you can achieve. Actually, with white, you can go really, really far. And as I've said in some previous videos, if you want to hurry the process along, you can apply a couple uh, thinned layers of white to build it up a bit, and then to get the really intense white areas on some sort of high highlight areas, you can use a thicker paint because that'll make it just go a lot faster for you and you won't be as concerned with blending at that point because you'll just be blending that really pure white into areas that are almost as white. So yeah, just again, just go back over the white, build it up and you can, and you can do this to your taste. You know, if you want, you can leave it a little bit more on the gray side or you can just really keep going until you've got a really strong white color. I prefer to go for the really strong white color here because, you know, I don't want this uniform to be mistaken for sort of a light gray tone. Next, I'm going to be moving on to painting the blue areas on his uniform jacket. And also that, I should say, that includes his bedroll. It's usually... Um, a dark blue. And the, the this French blue color is a very, very dark black blue. Um, I think there are probably some very good Vallejo colors for painting this. I don't happen to have any kind of specific French blue shades from Vallejo, so I have to make do with what I have. So I'm applying a base coat here that is a mixture of dark Prussian blue and black. And you need a lot of, it's just more convenient, but I'm going to be doing the majority right now. So once I've got a base layer of sky gray down, I'm then going to go back over it, apply another coat, and that is going to help smooth things out, get a more even layer. And at this point, we're already going to start sort of defining areas that are going to be lighter on the figure already by building up a heavier, thicker coat of the sky gray on areas of the uniform that we expect to be lighter and brighter. Once I've got a fairly even coat of the sky gray where I want it, I'm now going to make a mix. It's about 50-50 white and sky gray, and I'm going to start layering that over top. Now, it is definitely brighter than our base layer, but not so much that you're going to have a real headache trying to blend it in. And again, because this is a light white gray paint, there's a lot of transparency there, which also makes things easier. So you can see now I'm really starting to uh, focus this on areas where uh, I want the you know the clothing to really appear highlighted where I want it to appear light and you can see I'm sort of blending it out down into some of the harder folds in the pants and under you know around the spats and you know definitely when you're painting all of those straps and stuff on the front of his jacket and around his waistcoat all those sort of dividing lines and seams there you're going to be wanting to be really careful to make sure you keep that initial sky gray 
base coat in the areas where you need to really show that there's separate pieces going on. And just like with my last layer here, I'm going to be 